Morning guys, welcome back to F1 News. The circus of Formula 1 continues with major drama unfolding at the Australian Grand Prix. Just a couple of months after Susie and Toto Wolff were investigated by the FIA, the sports governing body, Susie Wolff has now brought a criminal complaint against the governing body of the sport. Asked for comment on this, Lewis Hamilton gives his full support to Susie Wolff, as I'm sure does her husband Toto. What does this mean for the future of the FIA and, of course, its president, Mohamed Ben Salim? Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Lots to say today. Carlos Sainz is back, of course, in the paddock for this weekend. He has said he's not going to be 100%. He's spent 10 days in bed recovering as much as he possibly can. Ideally, of course, you'd want to train, keep fit as much as you possibly can. That's not been the case over Sainz's recovery period. Albon had a bit of a longer time right before he came back last year because of, well, actually 2022, right, because of the summer break, I think, and all this type of stuff. So, look, for a normal human, a week and a half between having an operation and getting in a Formula 1 car again, that ain't going to cut it. But for these guys, the level of fitness they operate on and also just you know, the level of training they have and the support staff around them and you know all the absolute creme de la creme medical techniques or whatever they can do it science does say though he's not going to be at his absolute best and he does admit that yeah he feels like he's fit to jump in the car he can do the exercises that he needs to do i imagine he can get out of the car quick enough right because the faa have this test you've got to get out of the car you've got to take the steering wheel out within like seven seconds they all have to do that test of course at the start of the season and I think if they then break a bone they have to like redo it to make sure that they're okay but because science's surgery was just tissue I don't think he necessarily does have to but look he's not an idiot as he says I'm not stupid if I don't feel good tomorrow I'll be the first one to raise my hand and say that I need another two weeks until the next race and I'm the first one that doesn't want to be in pain to suffer or to make it any worse I'm not stupid I'll be very clear with how I am feeling and everything like that so we'll see if science does FE1 and decides you know what it's probably not going to happen this weekend. Then again, a lot of these drivers, at times you have to protect them from themselves, even if they're in pain. You know, they want to race at the end of the day. Science doesn't want to give up another good point scoring opportunity for the second weekend in a row. But Oli Behrman is there if required. There's another Formula 2 race this weekend in Australia. So if necessary, Behrman can be back in the car at theoretically an easier circuit than he had at Jeddah. The car will probably get better this weekend as well. They are clearly the closest challenger to Red Bull but they're still really a mile off the pace of the RB20 right now. But Ferrari have major upgrades in the works. They have minor updates here for Australia and other teams, of course, are also bringing changes in due course as well, as are McLaren, I'm pretty sure, this weekend's. Although there's no major upgrade to McLaren until May. At least that's what they say. Now, Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes have been talking about the Mercedes car. We know they had loads of issues in Jeddah, especially in the high speeds. They were slower in the high speed corners this year, the Mercedes W15, than last year's W14 in Sector 1, which is, uh, yeah, not exactly the sign that they would like. However, Hamilton did say that the car is better than people are giving it credit for, which is interesting, right? Because it makes me feel like Mercedes believe that the issues they've had the first couple of races are solvable and the car is actually pretty good under the surface. And it's not like a fundamental flaw. It's more like something in setup they've got significantly wrong. As Hamilton says this, it's definitely not an evil sister of the previous cars. He even called it amazing. I do think we have an amazing car. There's lots of potential in it. It. We just haven't maximized it through setup and through ultimately mistakes as in mistakes with the setup, I'm guessing. We're obviously not happy with the performance in the first couple of races, but I think there's a lot more potential in it that we haven't extracted yet. So there's some debate on this as to whether the car is fundamentally flawed in terms of the flaw or whatever, or whether they actually have something they can fix. And there's been some questions on this. Corriero Della Sport actually said today that their car is, and this is a very familiar story with Mercedes in these Grand Effect eras, one second faster in the simulations to what they have on track. Now, if their actual car was a second faster than it is, they'd be competing with Red Bull for the race victories, to be honest. But um, that's not how it is at the moment. The current theory is that new for this season, the pushrod rear suspension is causing problems with their correlation. So, look, I don't know if Mercedes really know what's going on. If you listen to what Hamilton says, he makes it sound like the car isn't fundamentally flawed. It's something they can change with the setup. And maybe that would align with something they don't quite yet understand about their rear suspension. Either an upgrade required or some sort of change to the setup that maybe they can find this weekend. Although they tried a lot of setups in Jeddah and none of them really seem to resolve the issue. Then they have a lot more performance to unlock. So we'll see if 
if they can get there in Australia, they have a very good record Mercedes at Australia. And actually Norris did say that I think the teams are catching up. I think there will be races this year that Max won't win, which is a funny thing as a Formula 1 fan to like hope that we have a non... I mean, it depends what you want, right? If you're a Max fan, you might want Max to win all 24. But I'm hoping for some competition at some point and, well, Norris reckons that can happen. He did predict before the year that he's going to win a race this year, but McLaren have lost a bit of ground, it seems, to Ferrari and to Red Bull over the winter. Maybe that's expected, though, because McLaren bought more upgrades last year and then Ferrari and especially Red Bull have been able to move somewhat further ahead. Speaking of Mercedes, though, if they can prove to have a decent car, they may have a chance of luring Verstappen away. We've discussed this over the last few days. The Red Bull drama, the fact that Max Verstappen is definitely in consideration of other teams, whether he would actually make a jump like that is still a question. Max says to Toto, or at least says with regard to Toto, it's nice to see him have interest, of course, in signing me that Toto has made very clear over the last couple of weeks, but also said it doesn't change anything from my side. I don't know what will happen after 2028 if I'll say an F1 or continue or sign a new deal with Red Bull, but that is why I signed the deal in the first place. I'm happy with the team. It is my intention to be here in the end, or to the end of the contract, as it were. So I don't know people were reporting this like, oh, Max confirmed he's staying at Red Bull, but he hasn't really said anything new, has he? I mean, any driver with a contract that is still ongoing will say it is my intention to fulfill the contract, obviously. So he's not said, oh yeah, this is all noise. I'm definitely not leaving. He says, no, it's my intention to stay at Red Bull, but he doesn't really go any further than that. And the feeling still remains that if Marco was to go or something else happens, Verstappen could leave. Especially if, for example, Aston Martin came along with an absolutely astronomical contract offer that we talked about yesterday. But there's been some other debate as well. Johnny Herbert, I don't know how much Johnny Herbert knows. Of course, he was working with Sky Sports over the last couple of years. He's actually a race steward this weekend. It's pretty cool to see him still involved in Formula One. Pretty sure that's what's happening anyway. He says, I don't know if he knows anything. I think it's just a bit of speculation, really, that Verstappen to Mercedes is pretty close to a done deal. So... I don't know what you guys think about that one. Stay tuned, because it's definitely not the end of the saga. This another one, another update today, another bombshell, really. Fred Vasseur remains cooking, because we talked yesterday that um, Ferrari have offered Adrian Newey something, probably something rather substantial. The question has been, is he going to go for it, or how sweet is this deal that Ferrari are offering him? Because if it's true that the Aramco Saudi Petroleum Oil Company is going to take over Aston Martin and offer limitless money to Max into Newey, Ferrari probably want to move quickly before that happens to get Newey's pen to paper right about now. And let's be real, I didn't think Hamilton was going to join Ferrari at the start of the season, but it happened. So I really don't think you can rule anything out at the moment. So there was some further discussion on this, confirming, according to sources, that negotiations between Vasseur and Elkan, of course, at Ferrari and Newey, and I guess his team or whatever, are well underway and well advanced. The parties concerned are expected to have another meeting schedules times within the next couple of weeks. So there's lots of talk that Ferrari are doing everything they possibly can to make this happen. If there's ever a time, now is the time, right? With all the drama at Red Bull, before that settles down, and it might take a long time to settle down, and there's an argument that um, Newey will think, you know what, screw these politics, I'm going to go to Ferrari. But of course, the problem is that if you don't want politics, Ferrari historically isn't the best team to join. But under Fred Vasseur, that might be a bit of a different story. So, you know, there's discussions on Newey and what else he could do, because let's not forget, they gave Hamilton the world, really. They said, look, put the money down that you want, but also we'll support all your initiatives you know, from a brand perspective, and they would effectively give Newey the reign to do whatever he likes. You want to build this car, you want to work on this project, like absolutely we can make that happen, and we'll pay whatever money required to make that happen. But if the Red Bull drama wasn't enough, the big drama the last 24 hours has been with regard to the governing body of the sport yet again. So if you guys have been following over the last couple of weeks, Andrew Benton dropped a couple of bombshells at the start of March on Bencilium under investigation for potentially manipulating a race result in Jeddah last year. If you guys don't know the background on this. Fernando Alonso, 10 second penalty that he got for misserving a five second penalty. That was then removed. Rumor has it that Ben Selliem himself, as the president, was telling the stewards to remove the penalty. You can speculate why that might be the case. The other incident was around the Las Vegas Grand Prix. For whatever reason, apparently he was trying to get the officials not to certify it and come up with reasons to prevent the race from going ahead, as this kind of FIA versus Ford on management power struggle, another power 
power struggle seems to continue behind the scenes. I think even Ben Sillium admitted that, um, that he kind of did this, or at least he admitted that it was plausible they could have denied it. But he clearly feels pretty safe in his power because as of yesterday, the FIA have cleared its own president. And this is just so funny, isn't it, really? Like, whatever this Ben Sillium guy does, and his tenure has been marred with controversy and problems, basically from start to finish, He's been cleared of these race interference claims by the FIA themselves. So the ethics committee of the FIA, let's not forget. And yes, the FIA say, well, no, our ethics committee is entirely separate to the rest of our division. But we found no evidence of interference by President Ben Sillium. I wonder what will happen to the whistleblower, actually, who reveals this all to Mr. Andrew Benson, of course, and the BBC and the rest of the media. So, yeah, they say that it was entirely unsubstantiated and there's nothing to it. They had 11 witnesses interviewed over a 30-day process and nobody could remember anything that was going wrong. The president's complete cooperation, transparency and compliance throughout the process during this investigation was greatly appreciated. So there you go. Well done, Ben Sillium. You've done nothing wrong. And as Joe Soward very, <laughs> I think, accurately says, the FIA Ethics Committee has decided the FIA president has done nothing wrong. Well done, everyone. So, of course, the FIA themselves are perfectly free to clear their own president of any wrongdoing. However, when it comes down to other courts, for example, they might see things slightly differently. So this, if you guys don't remember this story from back in December, when before all this other drama happened, this was like a massive drama back in December, which I thought was kind of, it's funny really looking back on this, because in today's you know, situation, this is pretty small fry. But back then, this was a massive deal, and it still is a massive deal, to be fair. But um, at the time, the FBA opened a compliance investigation into Toto and Suzy Wolf. This is because there was some speculation from the media if you guys remember, all of the teams came out and said that they did not at all ask the FIA to look into this, but they opened an investigation into compliance because the theory goes that Toto and Susie Wolf, you know, pillow talk related stuff. Toto works for Mercedes Formula One team. Susie works for F1 on the F1 Academy side. The theory is that potentially information could be shared between the two of them to the advantage of either potential party. And other teams want to be so happy about it. All the other teams said, we didn't ask you to look into this. It was just baseless speculation in the media. And so why did the FIA open a compliance investigation, especially when... Christian Horner, that whole saga, they didn't open an investigation into that, despite apparently having been asked to. This, to me, is like the massive conflict that I have to wrap my head around on why Ben Sullyem was so keen to get at Toto and Susie Wolf, it seemed, over this incident, but yet has been trying to sweep the Christian Horner stuff under the rug. That's a big question I think that needs answering. The FIA said at the time they are aware of media speculation looking into the matter and therefore they are doing their own investigation. All the teams then said, what are you doing? We didn't ask you to do this. And then the FIA said, oh, sorry, are bad, Toto and Susie. Let's just move on, shall we? But at the time, Toto and Susie said, this ain't the end of this, buddy. Like, we're coming for blood. And yesterday, just hours after they confirmed that Mohamed Ben Sullyan was cleared of all wrongdoing on the other case, I don't know if this was just coincidental timing or whether it was intended that Suji was going to drop this just after their own investigation concluded, because this, of course, is related to that matter back in December. But as Suzy Wolf says, I can confirm that I personally filed a criminal complaint in the French court on the 4th of March in relation to the statements made about me by the FIA last December. There has still not been any transparency or accountability in relation to the conduct of the FIA and its personnel in this matter. I feel more than ever that it is important to stand up, call out improper behaviour and make sure people are held to account. This I thought was quite the statement as well to close out on. While some may think that silence absolves them from responsibility, it does not. So go on Susie, like let's go. And um, yeah, as we see, obviously got to look, quite a lot of reaction here on Twitter last night and I'm sure for very good reason. And of course, just one thing to note, because this is in a criminal court, the FIA can't just say, well, we've investigated Ben Sillyam, he's done nothing wrong. Let's swiftly move along to the next controversy, which of course I'm sure is just around the corner as of late. I know there was also some drama as well on the way this is reported by Sky, I think probably understandably, right? Because Susie Wolf, of course, is a very important woman in motorsport, but yet she gets called wife of Formula One team boss, which is probably not ideal. So I'm sure that Toto Wolf is giving his support to Susie in this matter, but also Lewis Hamilton, perfect Hammer, was asked to comment on it and says that hopefully Susie taking this down will have a positive impact for women, especially in the sport. We're living in a time where the message is, if you file a complaint, you'll be fired. And that's kind of with the whole Red Bull drama, right? Where the accuser in question, we believe, has been suspended from Red Bull. And, you know, it just doesn't paint the greatest 
this picture. So I think Susie's probably right that if there's any time that this, you know, third statement might be true, now is probably the time. Now, what happens next? I guess we don't really know. Hamilton goes further on to say there is a real lack of accountability within this sport, within the FIA, things that are happening behind closed doors. There is no transparency. There is really no accountability. And we need that not just at the FIA, but also at Red Bull, right? And that's been the big discussion lately. This, I thought, was probably his best statement of the day as well. He was asked the question, does Mohamed Ben Siliam still have your full confidence as the FIA president to properly manage and police this sport? And Hamilton just straight up says he never has, right? So, like, never confidence from day one, and that remains the case, right? So, yeah, very strong words, right? Understandably, Susie Wolf's going to come out and, and file this criminal complaint against the FIA, and now we get to Hamilton with some very strong sentiments as well. It really is a remarkable situation. So what next on this? The FAA president remains because the FAA have cleared him of all wrongdoing. Well done, Mohamed Ben Zelia. But as I say, his tenure has been marred with drama. There's honestly way too many even to count or for me to even remember in terms of controversies this guy has put the spotlight on over the last couple of years. His time at the FAA will end. It will surely end sooner rather than later. But whether he's going to go anywhere is another question, right? And I think it just raises the question from Hamilton's side, from other side, that, yeah, there is no confidence, really, in the sport that the FAA do a good job or that their president has any idea how to properly believe it. So it's really not a great scenario. Hopeful that we get a further update on this in the relatively near future because I think there needs to be one. And the fact that the criminal courts are going to get involved is a pretty big deal. And it's the same thing on the Red Bull saga as well. So we have these two major complicated sagas of drama going on simultaneously on the Red Bull side, on the FAA side. And, um, you know, we're not even talking about what's happening on the track right now. I will mention that very briefly here because we do have a Grand Prix this weekend in case you guys had forgotten. These were the numbers, by the way, in terms of lap time improvements from last year to this between the various teams as Formula Sat Analysis puts together. And last year's Ferrari, or let's say this year's Ferrari, was just about faster than last year's Red Bull on average but of course that I imagine last year's numbers were based on Perez's numbers because he was leading the Grand Prix or at least he won the Grand Prix so maybe there's a bit more in that than it might have been otherwise but at the least improved it was the RB actually from this year to last year the Alpine did surprisingly well all things considered in terms of race pace improvements compared to where they were in Bahrain which of course is absolutely shocking and just finally to mention from F1 Stats Guru this is what I'm saying about Mercedes at Australia every year of the turbo hybrid era they have been on the podium at least in some positions on the podium either with a double podium or well as we can see here 2022 Russell was third Hamilton was second last year just 0.1 seconds behind Verstappen but of course that was under the safety car and uh, then this year remains to be seen if anything the first two races are to go by it's not looking great but if they can turn it around as Hamilton predicts maybe there is still a weekend on our hands but very much enjoyed to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new as always I greatly appreciate loads of new subs over the last few days Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.